I think the crickets are going to be a permanent fixture now. We finally got proof what I've been telling you all these years has been going on. Before I get to that, though, this is BTW RLM 324 for those on the past cast broadcasts, recasts, wherever you hear this, archives, so that you can maybe look up or search out for the content links. So if you're interested, you can track back and you can pick up something that you might find is interesting to you. Uh, I only talk about this stuff if you're interested in doing something to stop the nonsense against us. I really don't, I guess I'm not speaking to many people generally. Uh, there's not that many that really get engaged correctly. We're going to hear a little bit about the continued potential to do really well, really take it opportunities that are already presented to us and how we fall flat on our face. Uh, and in other words, as an instruction to us that we can do a whole lot better. And I don't say that as some you know, hyperbola, some opinion that's untested. Uh, I see this as looking through what we, I do and what I do with my colleagues. And we have lots of opportunities that we just don't take take advantage of that make this part of this. I can't say it's fun, but it sure makes it a lot a lot better to go through the, the, the gentle part and take advantage of things that start to work. And you're doing it where people don't even have a clue. They don't even understand. They're, they're standing there flat-footed. You're the only one that comes with the right answer, and I mean truly the right answer, based on black and white objective basis, uh, something that is objective that everybody can agree with, and then you and then you push forward. It takes a little bit to set up, but then you push forward. Your opportunity is made by what you've done. So I speak on this broadcast to people who want to get something done. I'm sure lots of people listen because it's interesting. But that's we're in a really bad way, folks. And uh, I've been telling you about that really bad way. But inside that bad way, I'm still saying we move we move despite it. And as we continue to con continue to educate ourselves as a society better than what we are right now, and more functional than we are right now, we until that day in the future, then we decide then what we can do against this more, uh, more the, big, the bigger problem. Uh, again, that's uh, made it right to the courts, and they came back with the big cricket, and so that's going to be with us. But I wanted, I ran across two things I, I was interested in to see. Again, we get all this government license, uh, and all it is is permission. Uh, 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 it's, it's a it's a license, a limited liability license by the government, and inside that the the rats will play, and so those some of you might be interested in this, some of you may not. My view on this is that we see within the system, in this case it's going to be the medical hardware and doctors and operations inside this problem, inside this license they give to, to help you, they say, they say uh, it's some really big, a serious skullduggery, and it takes people stepping up to find it. And I guess that's my view on this point here, not only to let you know something about if you're all having uh, back injuries or all this and that, uh, and operations, this is what's, what we have to contend with on top of everything else. Men, in other words, some people came, some guys came forward and did some research and find out a, a very serious problem, a scam inside your medical profession. And I, again, I bring this up to say these scams are really everywhere. I mean, this is where that whistleblower thing comes in. When you see the government beating down on the whistleblowers, you know they're part of the scam. They want it to go on. But anyway, going on to this, men exposed billion-dollar back surgery scam involving back, doctor kickbacks and fake hardware. And uh, th this is a much bigger story when you get into the insurance side and everything else. And, you'll, and again, the bar associations involved in all this eventually. On this story, it's not going to be talked about, uh, that bigger story. But on this point, two guys got involved. Two, two guys made it important to wrong the right that they decided they saw and they wanted to go after it. So this is my my reason why I'm even talking about it. Otherwise, uh, you all deserve to be scammed because you're not educating yourself, I suppose. I mean, I don't really believe that, but because we're getting scammed in ways that we were never under We were inculcated out of even recognizing certain things. Again, lots was made transparent to us. So man exposed billion-dollar back surgery scam. Interesting problem here. You won't even know it's happening to you. But until you read, listen behind the woodshed and pick it up and start to do your, your research. And I'm not saying lots of people don't do their own medical research, but in some regard, you can't know certain things that you can't know. And here's this another, another weakness and vulnerability that we have. Even if we were even really very diligent, we really can't stop against some of this stuff. Nearly a decade after Re Bill Reynolds and Mark Sir Sainsy first learned about one of the most outrageous medical frauds in California history. They met with some patients who say they are still suffering from devastating consequence of this scam. After surgery, it was nothing but pain-filled days, said patient Derek Moses, 
I couldn't sit. I couldn't walk. I couldn't be parent. Be a parent. Another patient says, I didn't want to live anymore. And they inquire about that. So serious is these operations. And we also find out that the entitled, entire medical surgery was unnecessary, as another patient will t say. So here they are, you're bought, bought, sold into, by your medical professional, sold into operations that aren't necessary. And then even worse yet, the, when they get into doing an unnecessary, uh, unnecessary uh, spinal operation, then they actually use what they found counterfeit hardware that they're putting in. They're not. They're not even up to standard. And how are you? And I, I looked at that. How are you even supposed to know about that one? I mean, how are you guys supposed to know? Well, you're out. You're out. How are you supposed to know what what hardware they're putting in? But th apparently, there's a, a whole business around making f fake hardware. And I guess I can understand why. There's lots of profit in all this stuff. And part of that's because it's unlimited liability as well as I see. They can just do what they want until they get caught, right? So unnecessary medical emergencies that they use counterfeit stuff in. Now, I want you to think about this as you have any kind of operation. How do you know you're getting the stuff that, you, that you, you're supposed to get, even if it's not an unnecessary one? Ultimately, they would learn the hospitals were not only overbilling for the spinal hardware, but in many instances, the dangerous counterfeit hardware was implanted into the backs of innocent people. I'm looking at invoices that ranged anywhere from $350,000 to $475,000, Reynolds said, who is a medical fraud investigator. And as simple as screws, they couldn't even buy a normal, regular certified screw to put in your in your body, that these are counterfeit. And the problem with that is that they're they're not up to standard, whether they're metal grade or the, the threads are, are not cut correctly and they cause harm and they can break off in your body and everything else. So again, we can we can lull ourselves into believing that the FDA is really uh, looking over the real implementation of this and we can hand it over to somebody else our health. We can continue to not question deeply enough and then think about this one. How do you protect against the problem of counterfeit hardware? I mean, this is almost coming down. I want a video, and I want you to identify, show me that in the video that you're putting that in there, and I don't want the, the lens, the camera to shut down until you get that thing in my body. And I want to see the evidence. This is where this is all coming down. It's not just having, it's not just having stuff for the cops, folks. This is, a, it seems everywhere is on the take for some kind of a, a, a taking advantage of everybody in, in any place. It's really getting kind of weird. It's totally outside of my concepting, so I don't, that I see this stuff, it just kind of blows me away. And before I forget, which I did, uh, I now I realize I've seen it twice and I forgot to say, over at YouTube at Sound Minds, if uh, you don't want to jump into the chat over at Real Liberty Media, uh, Sound Minds has a chat going on as well as they uh, syndicate this broadcast, I understand, uh, more regularly now, if not regularly, over, over there at the YouTube. So there's uh, more people picking the broadcast up to send it, uh, to give it to you all. Uh, and your, if I can say, your communities, your your, your people that you're together with. Uh, that's, uh, again, send it out. I appreciate what they're doing over there, and and to to get the message to to send out. Uh, and I, sorry, I can't get to you because of the chat. I don't do the chat even at the, at Real Liberty Media. It just it's too distracting. So don't. So excuse me for not doing that. But I I try to focus on what I'm talking about and keep it integrated. So it's uh, moving together in things that you things that you uh, need to hear. And not not me misinterpreting what you're saying in the chats because it just it became too I learned I wasn't capable of doing that early on anyway thank you at Sound Minds over at YouTube they've run two weeks straight now on uh, that I understand maybe three I don't know uh, on um, uh, simulcast live so they're picking up the feed over at RLM so anybody can do also do that the, to talk to your group of people yeah, I appreciate the interaction over there I periodically can jump over I get to get to it wait days late but I get to see with the with the chat I get to see what you're saying and try to get a feel for what uh, what's important to y'all and how to address the things I find important that, that you need to know. So appreciate all that over at Sounds Minds on YouTube, picking up the feed at reallibertymedia.com. So here we have, a, under license, you have all this going on, scams and everything cover, and, and you see the doctors are involved. You see the hospitals are involved. You, you see that there's parties outside, the, wherever they're getting this, uh, they're not, they weren't getting these... Uh, you're getting this screwed the wrong way here. Uh, they didn't get the screws from the regulated uh, manufacturer over in South Korea, so they're not even coming from America if you're from America or your own country. Uh, and but they were getting the counterfeits. And when you look at the just the screws here, I can imagine the the fitting of the parts and all that, that you get for joints and things. 
if they're not made of the right stuff the right way, I can see it cause nothing but problems. So you, you wouldn't even know that. It surprised me. How do you even, you're knocked out, you're on the operating table. How do you know they're putting the right stuff in when you're dealing with a whole bunch of people that are hiding underneath the concurrence of a, of a essentially racketeering? How do you find that out? And so you have to be diligent to, to protect yourself, even when you're unconscious, folks, if you don't get the way they're doing this. And I consider the society unconscious. I, I consider it that way when I come on and, to, and do you, you know, show you, explain to you when I do the first 15 or so seconds of crickets. Our society is unconscious, and we're we're being done just like this. I don't see any difference on how this works. Pharma pharmacy warns FDA, and here's on the other side. The pharmacy warns the FDA cancer-causing chemical found in widely used heart pill. And so those of you on heart pills, those of you going to be picking up pharma, the FDA is allowing these manufacturers to exceed or make standards that other people know uh, are are really no good for us, uh, these chemicals that are involved. The manufacturer comes out after this and says, well, we don't put that chemical in, so this must be coming from a supplier of the chemical to us. And what this is is a, a pharmacy uh, warned, a uh, Food and Drug Administration, that it found a chemical believed to cause cancer in a widely used blood pressure medication, according to the filing at the federal agency. Valisure, an online pharmacy company licensed in 37 states, told the FDA last week that high levels of dimethylformamid were found in Valsartan, a drug produced by a Swiss drug maker Novartis. And those are also the ones that do your injections for vaccines, if I don't if I got that correct, and other pharmaceutical companies as well. The drug is used to treat hypertension in adults. The World Health Organization classifies dimethylformamide, formamide, I guess I could say, uh, for or, or DMF as a probable human carcinogen. Not just possible, this is a probable one. At any rate, so the, the Valisure comes in and says there's a, they want to have the FDA now reduce this, this these formulations with this DMF to 1,000 nanograms. And what they allow, what the FDA allows is 8.8 million nanograms. And so this is a FDA is supposed to look out for your safety. You know, they're extending. If they if they made that 8.8 .8 million, they know that it was in the product before. So I don't know what Novartis is talking about, not knowing it's there. And so we see, again, inside the system is not really looking out for us. We're gonna ha we really have to look out for our ourselves. And so, like, the last one took two guys looking at this to expose the fraud ex and, and, and work hard to get it, all the proof and then start to move forward to let people know. And I don't know where else that goes. If it ever ties into government funding, you can go that way and go for fraud, waste, and abuse. But that's up to you all to find out as you go and do that, as you find that wrong to make right. Those of you who have operations that don't feel right because of certain things going on, and don't go, don't make this up in your head. You really got to be honest about it. You've been in operations and things aren't quite right and didn't quite go the way you are. You're going to have to figure out uh, how to address that and make that wrong the the right you need to fix because other people are getting harmed. Again, two people stepped up in order to do the the last one. One company steps up to say, hey, we got a we got a problem here, and the FDA uh, says they'll look into it. The manufacturer says we don't do that, but then it concedes that they may use a supplier's product, or is that supplier's product coming from the same people that make the screws for your spinal hardware? And that could be anything, folks. I mean, they use those screws in all kinds of places. That wasn't even the joints or the or the, the sockets or anything like that. Anyway, uh, all nonsense going on, and we really have to pay attention. That's just for you all to be, when you get broken and, and there's this uh, medical uh, medical technology to help fix you, the, the good parts of that, uh, we can't even rely on all that. And at some point, we're going to have a, I, well, we're going to have that, hopefully, that perfect perfect storm, and, it, and it'll become a societal reality that we have to fix some things and change it. And I don't know, a lot of times I realize that people respond in, in with force in mind, but I don't know that's the way we need to do it. But at any rate, I, I can't stop, I may not even be here when this thing happens, if, if it ever happens that we finally have had enough. We've Enough is enough. And we finally actually do start to do with our, our problems, uh, what we see instead of talking about it. it. takes people to step up. Two people, two, a company and, uh, and two men that stepped up to stop two problems in this uh, pharma, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's just a big and organized criminal syndicate that your government agencies help. And part of that is also part of you because you're not stepping in and, 
making those things important. And I suppose you don't do that a lot of times because you're doing, if you don't have, a, like for myself, I don't have a problem. I don't need to take any medicine. In fact, I would probably go to herbs first to try and do this. Uh, and there are conditions when that all that may not work. It, it really, the med Western medicine has certain things that you just can't get a handle on. But again, you, it's our lifestyle before that usually gets us into involve, uh, gets us into those conditions anyway. So we have a lot more to step back in ourselves and take care of. But for myself, I don't have this problem. I wouldn't be searching it out. But if you, those of you that are getting medication, you need to search out this stuff. See, are they putting things in your in your medication? Maybe that's what's causing your side effects. And, and this cancer thing won't let be around. It'll be around maybe for you for 15 years. So you're walking yourself into an increasing cost as you move on, if you're able to continue. I mean, this is the other thing. Again, this is all set up to parasitically extract from your life. So your life was a production, and they're extracting, taking commerce and extracting from your life, and they're doing it parasitically. They do it under a color of authority, and I've, I've explained over and over. Those of you who want to hear it, not just hear it, but actually listen and then go to learn what, go look for it, and then apply, start to learn how to apply it. These are all felonies against us. And my, the, if I could say it's a shock to me, which is not, it's been happening so long I've been able to pick this out. When you find that's written into the law that they get to do that, that's where I hope at some point, for instance, go to Title 50 and read, the, read for the exceptions of what the government gets to do to you and their agents. And maybe you'll start to realize what I said. We've really got to finally come quickly to the point when enough is enough. All this stuff. And because it's so comprehensive, it's going to take all of us. You're not going to be able to do much of this on our own uh, in a comprehensive way at all. And now uh, i got a double. Okay, so standardized. There's a bunch of people out there to try and help you think. And the government's there uh, for the technology that we have. And you know, moving on to a new, another story here about a potential problem. But it actually extends to something I told you way back, resulting in talking about Fukuzilla. When uh, it was all over people, they lots of money on you on frauds and scams about... Fukuzilla going to attack the western United States and with all the radiation in the oceans and the plume and all this nonsense. And I I did a quick analysis of all this, and I told you what I, I found, and it's been holding out all these years. It's been holding out. Well, here's another example of what technology, western technology does, which is more pervasive than you might think, and only do when these stories pop out do we get to see that so we can inform ourselves that, Maybe instead of looking over it for Fukuzilla to come across from Japan to attack the, the western United States, we need to look a lot closer, and we need to look a lot closer everywhere other than Japan for these threats. An extraordinary severe, an extraordinarily severe emergency. The radioactive leak at Harborview. This is coming out of Seattle, I suppose. I can't remember now. I think so. Harborview campus. Sounds like up in there. Well, they got a cesium-137 leak. Why don't you read the story? At one point, you're seeing people are moving to stop this leak. It was a problem. They were they were going to get rid of a radiation device that was to for, to kill pathogens in this research facility, and somebody made a mistake. It was supposed to be a routine extraction of the cesium vial, and something went wrong. They locked this place down. The point was, well, I saw that this is cesium-137, You've been told that it only exists in nuclear reactors, and I told you, no, it's in about everywhere that they're going to be using any kind of nuclear technology, and you're going to find it in hospitals and medical centers, and you're going to find it in industry and every kind of things, and they use it also for sensors. And uh, here we have the evidence that although we see that they're cleaning a lot of this up and they're not going to let one little square inch go, even though you notice inside that the people that were the experts failed miserably on lots of levels, that I wanted to point out to you again, here was an exposure of cesium-137 that was not related to some nuclear disaster in, in, uh, in Fukushima. It's all around us, folks. This stuff gets out, and to me, I looked at this, and I don't see this when you read the story. This is no, it doesn't seem to be much different than the Clean Water Act. And these people, underneath these licenses, may not want to call because of the cost of these things. They may not want to call on an off gas. They may not want to call on, an, on an, a problem, on an example. We see those examples in the Clean Water Act where a municipal, some, some agency, some jurisdiction may not want to report that there was a, some kind of a spill. And they said all they do there is they just give extra penalties for when you didn't tell them. And they, 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 they pat you on the back when you did tell them. 
And so this one was told it was that bad, and they got involved, and you see all that's involved. And I conceivably to me that maybe it wouldn't be inconceivable that people that uh, had some accidents periodically wouldn't want to say anything. They do what they would do because just to, you know that they thought was good enough. And here we have an exposure. And when I heard all that stuff in what 2011, and Fukuzilla was coming to attack the United States and everywhere, I went as goes to so around the world. Forget everywhere else, but. And then we started finding uh, cesium-137. That had to be from Fukuzilla. No, folks, it's, uh, here's an evidence that it's right here in a town near you. Anyway, I'll go off. Uh, just go off on this stuff about how blind we are as a society to look and see. We're, we're our own messy creatures, folks. We don't need to look out anywhere. And this ignorance is what's used against us. And these people that are supposed to be the experts did nothing but lots of mistakes here. Again, some good is done because they can get underneath the handle of it. But we leave ourselves open to all these people that are experts. It, it's just phenomenal what we allow. Hopefully, again, there may be a theme to this broadcast. We're going to finally get to the point that enough is enough. And that will probably not be the title of the broadcast, even though I may repeat this, because it just seems to be stuck in my brain enough. We, we need to get to a point where enough is enough. But, and I want to make the caveat, please, when enough is enough, we have to respond correctly and properly. And then I always get, I find it interesting. People who I would think would uh, understand reason, uh, they say, well, what, what's proper? You know, well, who, who determines proper? Or, oh, there's proper. It means you have to, well, yeah, folks, you have to respond to the problem correctly. You don't incorrectly respond to the problem. You're not giving up anything because you decide and discern what the proper response to something is. And so we have to become able to do that and I look at a society of crickets and realize the odds of that happening right now are very slim and partly why I come every week to tell you here look at this and consider this as a response consider how you jumped in there consider this to begin your steps in your journey to be one or two of the people that would step forward to call people's attention and then work to get a resolution to those types of problems. Here, stop focusing on the fact that Fukuzilla's continue. I guess he broadcasts it. Still talk about this. Fukuzilla's coming, and folk, folks, it's right here. These pro, these chemical, these um, elements are in the in everywhere. They're everywhere where technology is. You almost can't not have uh, this technology and this stuff be around. And, and so, back to it. So here's a bunch of people that are going to do a whole bunch of things. Relative to another uh, fraud upon us, and Fukuzilla, we got also the, uh, now we have this other fabricated fairy tale uh, movie creature called Climate Change. And now what's interesting is that it wasn't billed as Climate Change when it started. It was billed akin to the Green Jobs Act. And I told you, it's all the same stuff. I've been talking about this stuff for years and how to address it and that we did address it back in 2013. We we're on point, on foundation, and now it's coming out to haunt everybody. The failure of everyone to recognize the law. And this is what I was telling you. Is another thing come up in the news that there I told you there was no law. Now, there is law in us and those of us that will assert it, but and the expectation of remedy and the insistence that is, as our witness continues to show that it doesn't exist until it starts to exist again. So this is not a throwing up of your hand. This is now a focusing on the law is in each one of you. Because the system, the world, works on living and liability and what they can get away with. And that's, I'm not saying anything new there. So keep talking about the, the crime against us is not going to solve it. But here's some people that believe they're going to do it this way. And in regard, in some regard, I don't, I don't want to diminish this. This is the way you do it. This is called an avoidance. It's being deemed to be someone, a bunch of representatives not doing their job. But this is a bunch of uh, representatives, actually what I see. And, and it's interesting, an opportunity is being missed here. A lot of the wrong things are already being done. It's really kind of a, the thing that sticks in my mind. And I've been talking to my colleagues because we're, we're kind of in the thick of this as well because of our lawsuit and our notices that we have to file. We just filed two more. Looks like we're going to have to file a whole bunch more. And uh, to continue the witness of the wrong a government of the state of Oregon is doing relative to this thing that is now admitted to be a climate change measure in the HB 2020 in Oregon for what they called uh, the uh, carbon tax. And so this is a, the point about this right up front without hard, have, if I didn't know anything else to tell anybody else about any of this would be that this, these sorts of things are punitive in 
in their origination. They presume your guilt to do that. And they provide no due process to mitigate or, or remove or uh, avoid or control the amount of punitive harm that's, that some of these people believe they can put on you. And this is the main problem. You are being deemed to be a criminal, that you already have a punitive damage you need to be paying. And you don't have a due process one to uh, have that checked is what the Oregon Republicans are going missing for to avoid climate change vote. And the governor of Oregon sends the police to find them. So this is a very interesting dynamic. I don't know if many people have been hearing about it. The Some of the Republicans, I realize not all of them, and that's a kind of a dangerous thing, but uh, 12 or so Republicans have left the state so that they could not create the quorum required to make the vote on HB 2020, which these the Democrats, and because of our lawsuit, I'll tell you whether they be Republican either, who are still sticking around, or the Democrats themselves, or the Bar Association, were put on notice, and they defaulted, were better than that, they just on notice, they defaulted on a lawsuit to this very thing that they, they admit is a war against the laws of the United States, it's a treason. That's the de long form definition for treason, and it dis and it into and it uh, destroys the Republican form of representative government. What this HB 2020 does that the Republicans have avoided are avoiding by leaving the state. What that does is it makes it so they can't even vote on it. And most people that are uh, believe in this punitive harm against even themselves. This is, how loon this is how insane people are. They believe, that don't realize that they are considered the harm that th they agree should have no due process to mitigate, and they are punitively liable right out of the gate. This is who we're dealing with in this country. If you thought that you were living around people that thought about rights and th think that there was something about an original, original uh, fundamental establishment that keeps your property rights safe, from the mass, a massive mob of the minority. Even corporate law has has a minority protections. But uh, the Democrats, in this case, are attempting to put this this law that uh, this law into place, and they have a supermajority, so they can get it done. Why? The only other thing that the Republicans can do is avoid the quorum in the state. And a lot of people that would agree with the Democrats to destroy everybody's life, in this case it's Democrats, to me, I don't, the Republicans, the Democrats, or the Bar Association, which was in our lawsuit, are all the culprits. They're all bringing this stuff forward. Even the ones that avoided it are actually, I can extend to the Republicans that left the state, I can extend that they actually comported with the default judgment again, that we are, that is in our favor at Jefferson Mining District. I can actually, in fact, we're, we're talking right now how we're going to help to protect that. In other words, they aren't the felons that they've been made out to be. They aren't just doing their job. They're actually fulfilling a duty. And that gets my, my thoughts into this opportunity is being missed. What happened in this situation is one of the uh, senators, I think it was Boquist, he came out of the gate saying, we're not going to be, I'm not going to be bullied by you. If you're going to bring the, uh, the, the governor sense out the cops, the state police. That's why they left the state, so it gets rid of the state police threat, not in the jurisdiction. If you don't think jurisdiction, understanding jurisdiction is important here. And uh, in, in the book, I think it was Boquist says, you, you better bring a whole lot of your guys and make them bachelors, and uh, they're going to have to come and take me out, because I'm not going to let you bully me no more. Now, that's all paraphrase. He didn't say any of that. But essentially, he said, bring, you're going to come and take me. You better bring, you better bring a lot more help. And you better bring bachelors. And since what he's saying is that you're going to come to a gunfight, and uh, I don't want husbands to die and their families to suffer. Which, okay, it sounds cool. It sounds like, oh, I'm being a man. But, you know, the bigger, way bigger opportunity is missed here to absolutely inform the public, uh, the populace, what's going on, inform the, uh, the people of the treason that's going on in this, and support the duty that they have as opposed to the everyone wants to talk about the job that they're not doing and uh, I tell you what folks I don't know about officials I don't care about their job I want to know about them fulfilling their duty and if you think that's in a small semantic the only way you have a, a cause anywhere is if you can attach someone's duty to uh, to you that's failed 
It's not about their job, folks. I'm just telling you that. And my sadness, I read this stuff, and even and these senators do not understand. They're not even capable, actually, of being the senators that they think that they are. They do not have that in their mind. One of them actually came out immediately to talk about he was fulfilling his job. He had the opportunity, folks, and if you don't, if you understand what I'm saying here, to speak to the higher duty and defeat those that have an opinion about jobs. And once you get it onto the law, now you can defeat everybody as long as you're within the law, which that, is that narrow path discussion I keep telling you about. As soon as they get into their duty, they can, they can destroy everybody that brings their opinion. And they can start pointing to the law. What law? The law that I just described, this HB 2020, destroys the Republican form of representative government. The evidence that they're out of the state shows you that. As the Republicans, in my, my, my interpretation of this, are doing their duty to avoid the vote so they don't bring their constituents into this punitive harm, which the supermajority of the state believes everyone should be under. What they're doing, though, is they're claiming that this is a this is not the other the, the the people that want to impose the punitive harms against you the criminal the treason the people that are committing treason they will argue that the the arguments seem to come out things like fossil fuels things like looking at the future generations being harmed by that uh, they're speaking of the things of climate change they're not talking to the point that all that's irrelevant they bring up the exposure that wants to play on your emotions, and the fact is the law is a treason. And my, I'm looking at this, why aren't we hearing that out of these Republican senators that are avoiding this quorum? Why didn't they come out with a very strong uh, statement relative to that? So that the, they, they present their point instead of hitting and missing here and there with different senators making statements, and actually accepting into the fact that it, as a senator that they only have a job to do one of the one of the uh, Bertschiger, he comes out and says well i'm doing you know i'm, I'm doing my job well no i want uh, you need folks you need to understand there's no job here for these people right here right now it's a duty they're either upholding the law or they're not and if they haven't come out to tell everybody how they're upholding the law you see how the other side wins the day in fact the other side has the media the other side has a supermajority, they have the the advantage of being able to press that harder than anybody else. And as long as the Republicans, as few as they are, stay silent on the proper points, they're going to be pummeled. And so then what happens? Now we're hearing that the, who are these people? The three percenters? The Oath Keepers? They're stepping in. The militia now? They've closed the Oregon House State House. The Marble Nut House is being closed because now the militia has stepped up to threaten the government and or the governor. Now, I'm not saying that this shouldn't happen, but there's a, a correct way to do it, not just threaten. They're not doing it for any reason other than their emotional statements. They haven't brought out the... Nobody is talking about, in the way I'm saying to you, is the way you look at this, that what they're attempting to do is to... What they're doing with this and what the evidence now shows with the avoidance measures that the Republicans have taken... They have destroyed the Republican form of representative government. They are doing that underneath laws that are making war on the laws of the United States. They are uh, breaching the organic of obligations of the state, even if you're looking at an occupying force, which I can identify in 1957, which is the Bar Association. They have to hold to the organic obligations, and they're not. Now, my view on this is they need to be speaking like this. They need to start educating the population what the law is, because as I've told you, the law is an antidote, antidote to an adjective, reflexive, foreign impositions of policy. And I, I mentioned our lawsuit. Uh, they can bring that up as well. They can bring up the, the very facts of what we said in 2013 were coming and were going to happen when we sued against what they were doing to the miners, but more importantly on the fact of using the public treasury to attack the people, misappropriation of public funds, and utilizing federal authorities as well to do it. 
now we've now we've got the problem of the now you want to start you constitutionalists are stepping up and want to understand stuff and if you understood what you're doing you could actually be coming to aid this problem and make this a big issue that the issue it ought to be. But we're now looking at the problem of the Congress not immediately stepping up to to protect and guarantee. This word guarantee is very serious. It, it's not something they have to wait for. It's something they're supposed to be ahead of. They're not guaranteeing that Republican uh, representative form. They're allowing a governor committing treason to make invalid orders to direct the police state, the military, to go after representatives of the constituents of the people that are doing their duty, beyond their job, beyond any job anybody thinks they have. They are actually doing their duty, even though they're not saying that to my dismay, because to me, a more proper expl explanation, uh, I guess like it's over the last 10 years of what we've been doing, when we put the proper explanation before people, they, they do finally get it, notwithstanding any education inculcation to the contrary that we might meet. And so I'm probably going farther for people on this uh, that maybe you don't understand, you don't care. So it's over out in Oregon, it don't matter. Folks, this is mattering. You have all your folks listening and understanding and seeing this in the news, watch it go by the and then fall in the memory hole. You have the ability to grab onto something here and do correctly what's never been done before to reorient everyone's mind of what's supposed to be. We've laid a foundation. Before ourselves or Jefferson Minders, we laid the foundation. All we can do is do what law allows. We're not doing, we're not calling the militia in. And it wouldn't make any sense to do that because those people don't know what the hell they're talking about. I don't care how much Constitution they think they knew, they execute the wrong thing. They all have a right of citizen's arrest, but have they made the foundation to do that? Did they invoke Congress to come and, and, and do something first before you have to resort to what your opinion is? And that opinions will not stand before the power. The power is the one that has the final say, and that's none of these people. Now, what, they, what we as the people have done is allowed little minority militia groups to stand up in all their ignorance, in good intention. I'm not certainly not attacking the good intention, but they don't understand. And I've, uh, I have experience with the talking to some of the so-called leaders of these groups, and they have no clue. And they don't talk to me after that either. They'll storm out of a room and find out that they didn't. They could have went a different a way that didn't jeopardize a whole lot of people. Could have actually got something done. And they don't want to hear that. And this is your your so-called representatives are the same way. And some of these guys we've told on how to do this, and they still refuse to do the better thing. Now, who am I about the better thing? Uh, all of the better thing is I'm saying recite the law. That's what the better thing is. And I, I can't imagine that anybody would argue with me on that. Why that isn't the first thing out in their defense, if they need one, is amazing to me. Again, I said, I come in the broadcast, I, I played crickets. Is, they're set, folks. It's just set in stone. It's in, it's in us to be crickets. And that, we were, that, crickets can't keep a republic. And you might give, think that's lip, so give lip service to the phrase, we keep the republic. Oh, what's that? That's, that's how far away you are from understanding that was the only thing ever in human history that allowed for us to have property and have it protected and be protected against these kinds of treasons, these kinds of tyrannies when people are accepting of something foreign being imposed as a policy consideration that deems you to be a criminal, you should have been concerned. That you're not, or that you want to argue with someone like myself, shows your problem. And then it shows our problem. There go, oh, so Oregon Republicans are, have left the state, to my knowledge, uh, 11 or 12, I don't know, it would have been nice to see them all. But they did that because the state police can't, go, uh, can't grab them. And I don't know what's going to happen. I understand that they actually can't get this passed if they stay out, which I encourage them to stay out. It's their only and last check in a constitutional republic to do this. And I am saying that that's their duty. And I'm saying that not because it's my opinion. That's what the law requires. It's what our injunction requires that they do in the reading the Republican Party was party to our suit. By not supporting carbon 
whatever you call it, relative to climate change. This is the very interesting thing about this pro this title that, I, that you know, may not appreciate that I do, because we sued, one of the things we sued within the sustainable development cover was the climate change condition, that this story comes out and says, now uh, identifies the carbon tax as a climate change connection, brings our lawsuit directly uh, to bear on this, and we now can cover the actions as a being com being consistent with the obligation that their default to Jefferson Mining District in the lawsuit of 2013 brings. And I guess I'm saying it that way to show you that there's some alter alternate authorities that can be brought to bear here if you set them up over time. Look how long we've been waiting for this opportunity. Why do I say it that way? Because there's not much going on to stop this invasion. Most of you all don't do a thing about it. We'll complain about it, but we won't really talk and do something. We won't set up our records to give us the least amount of protections or the least amount of, at least we can push up against this discussion. Have a word in your mouth. When someone says, you do your job, Mr. Senator, Representative, or whatever it is, you can come back and say, well, I'm not interested in their job. I want to know what their duty. What do you think my first one of my first comments is when I hear a cop say, oh, I'm just doing my job? And that happens all the time. This is what the, the the insanity that goes on, and people accept this. I don't accept that. I don't care about his job. I want to know about your duty, and then I tell them what the duty is. I have a word in my mouth. Your duty was to honor the law. And then I would ask the question is, you took the oath, and I presume you were supposed to do the law. Did you forget that? Now, what did I tell you about controlling the narrative? You don't let them put the narrative on. You control it by saying what the law is, and you don't say anything superfluous. You took an oath to uphold the law. Here's the law. Why aren't you upholding it? It's a much better thing to say. I took an oath as a senator to uphold the law. This is the law. This is the attack against the law. And the only thing left to us in a supermajority, because we've lost the protections of the minority and the and the majority vote of of our property laws, has been denounced by these inva this this treasonous invasion that we've had to take the the lawful action to avoid the encounter. Not evade the encounter. We're avoiding the encounter. And if go back to the title. I told you, you can look right at the title and see everything that's right there. They properly said the word avoid, didn't they? This is even from mainstream media. Avoid climate change vote. Okay, so I guess I'm taking a long time. I don't know if it's uh, coherent to you to you all. If you don't care, I guess it doesn't matter. If you're interested in how they're doing this, I guess it does matter a bit to hear it. But we need people to come out with the right answer. The work that I'm doing with my colleagues right now, I don't know if we can ever pull this off. But we're trying to figure out where the better word can be stated, the better thing to do, the better a statement to make that's way, way better than being bludgeoned by the uh, by the invader. And this is where I say you find a wrong, you make it right. Those of you that have a knowledge about this can be stepping in to offer that help. Now, I'm telling you today, I don't. it's coming to me three days, four days late. I didn't understand this was going on. I can't keep track of everywhere. But now that we know it, again, it, we've had our notices going in. Now we have to write a couple more. All we can do is continue the enforcement action that we have, and other people can start using that as well, or you don't even need that. You just go to the actual things that I've been saying, and there's a whole lot more to say. But if, if no one's going to step up against this, inv this foreign invasion through the imposition of a policy called voluntary policy, no less, called climate change or carbon tax or whatever they want to call it, green jobs, if you don't want to rise up, then you're asking for the problem. And I see these senators doing what they're doing without the proper word in their mouth. They're asking to come back and be bludgeoned. And to me, I don't understand why anybody would do that. Why wouldn't you want to do this in the most powerful way? You're watching pretty interesting stuff going on where a le part of a legislature has to leave the state. You know, as long as they have the right to continue to do that, I don't see a problem. But when you have someone that's going to go send out a military, the, the state police, remember, these are the people that killed Finnicum are going to go after these people uh, for doing what's their duty to avoid this crime and treason against the people. I wish they would even just say that. Then you see the failure of government, and then you see why governments are failing, and that's you, actually. We're not rallying up to point out that they're all wrong, and this is the way it's supposed to be. No, you don't say you have a job, Mr. Senator Bertrager. You say you have a duty, and it's being fulfilled such and so. 
No, Mr. Senator Boquest, if that if he's a senator. No, you don't say call the you know, bring your guns and we're going to get into a gunfight. You don't need to go there. Don't fuel the bad action now that the, the militia starts to step in. And now you've shut down the government. That becomes a whole different problem. And guess where the government, the federal government's going to come and weigh on what side of that because the proper record wasn't made. They're certainly not coming in on the militia side. As good, good, good intention as it was, they never set a proper record. The senators never set a proper record. We have a record that's been properly set. We can focus in on it. But again, the the, mo the actual power, the ones that are moving with the, with the action and response are the ones that are going to get air. And so I've told you a long time ago, uh, microcosm of the miners, a microcosm called America, the miners tried to blow up a couple people inside the mining uh, district, blew up, tried to blow the mining district up that was going to be the most formidable against the system and could gather up the the, for, the assembly of people that could actually do this. In other words, we saw already inside this, our own people, if you will, if they are our people, insiders and plants that would try to destroy something that could be a force and effect, and the rest of the people, the rest of those people walked away from it. In fact, they actually took on the other side. They took on the side that wanted to destroy the power, the, the power of the people that could rise up and actually diffuse this whole thing. And so here we have an opportunity in Oregon to see how it goes on, not just see, but actually impose upon these derelict uh, officers the law. And instead what we're getting is the ignorance or insanity or in tyra tyranny speaking. And I don't, I'm just, I have to shake my head about us. I don't know why we do that. And, and it's just interesting where I've been in the last decade. Again, I've I don't engage with a lot of these people that, what, what, the common law juries, the militias, the whatever you all want to call yourself out there. That's why I probably don't have a whole lot of people that support, that, that want to continue to follow this and learn how to do it a lot better. When I expose to all them, all the guys I have, all the women I have that come and say, this is what they're supposed to happen, I say, Bob, but look right over here. This is where the path was. And then they get all egoized and they get, upset, at least upset, and then they start vilifying me, that they really didn't understand it, what they were up against, and that there was a, a, a better path, in fact, a more fulfilling path. Now, that 99% of the people pick the, le the less fulfilling path is a wonder to me, folks. And I want, that's where I start thinking about that. I don't go too deep because I'll just stop. Why I even talk to anybody? It's actually coming out in the, in the mining thing. Again, the microcosm of the miner is the macrocosm we call America. Most likely, no one's going to listen behind the woodshed because they don't want to listen to how they have talked to they do it right. The, the court case came down, and, the, and all the people that are vi against me were together to advance a case that, that, that was a complete failure, and predictably so. Why do we do that as a people? They form up a big blood clot and then think that's going to be healthy for the body. I don't get this. And when I say pre predictably so, it's not my opinion that I'm talking from. It's You can look at the black and white already there, the objective basis that we all can work from. We actually can't change, and the, the better, the best is the ones we can't change. Why I went to the fiduciary duty of the state to its organic principles, not even the Bar Association can defeat in its overthrow in 1953. In, at least outwardly in 26 different states, but we know more because of the way they work, that even that occupying force cannot overthrow the organic foundations that cannot be overthrown. Why we don't go to those things and not make it, I told you, don't bring an issue. Don't bring it, don't create a gunfight, and then don't bring an issue to a gunfight. Bring the answer. Why we would choose to not do that. Why anybody would come and oppose me without even discussion, without even working out our differences. It would, it would be helpful to me because maybe I am wrong. At this point, I don't have anybody that actually can speak to find the wrong at this point, and certainly not with how we've been applying it. You can't, 
the, si the quiet successes we make can't be disputed. And this is the other point that people, do, they don't understand when they talk to me what they're walking into. I don't, we just don't talk. We actually do stuff. We don't promote it. Well, a couple of things we'll tell you about, and I told you those are the fruition. Once we come to fruition, I'll tell you about it. But everything's always in an ongoing work. Again, you know, freedom was taking vigilance. You know, keeping the republic was every day. And, and so Oregon is, is giving us a window of a problem here, and, and I want you to notice what's going on. And I want, I'm going to be I'm on record here. It's going the wrong direction when it had every opportunity to go in the correct one and actually cause a real change back, if you will, to the future, back to where the organic responsibilities are to bring accountabilities to this, to bring people into a knowledge of what's supposed to be going on. And why we go to the create the blood clots in all this, I'm just fascinated at one level. So I want you to be aware, folks. There's a few people that will listen to me. Look and be aware. If you can help, I mean help, then maybe you want to engage yourself with where you can find and become an influence to people that are making decisions. And that's what I'm in my colleagues. I'm talking right now. Who do we have who will finally listen now that it's gotten this bad and stop blowing, stop saying dumb things like bring your guns and I'm going to, you know, it's like you're going to take my gun from my cold dead fingers. I don't, we don't need to go there. And we can do a lot better, a lot better in explaining the condition and get us back to an understanding if through a society that's been dumbed down and beat down by an occupier they didn't even know exists, been transparent to them. And this is the other thing. How is it that they can become a legitimate order when all this is only supposed to be voluntary, this stuff with climate change? But see, we don't even get that. We don't get to say that. Why? Because I, we got we got people saying that, a senator saying, that's not my job, I'm doing my job. And then it just gets in an argument. And the other guy says, oh, you're going to have to bring a whole lot more guns to stop me. I'm not going to stand up to your bullying. Well, he could do that, state the bullying part that's much better than to threaten the, threaten the cops that are willing to kill them. Remember, uh, I'm reminded of Finnicum. Under the same governor's rule. What does he sound? That's supposed to sound macho? No, but don't listen to that guy behind the woodshed. No, can't do it that way can't walk in with four sentences in your mouth and shut down the whole thing and make it right and allow them to be avoiding the problem and then put the scrutiny on the criminals, actual criminals. And if you, again, I guess the other thing is you look, watch this, watch how this goes down, how this goes all south, folks. And they're going to get, and the other side is going to get their way and they have every opportunity right here to, sh to expose it and start to shut it back down. And I'm saying that with a little bit of experience over the last 10 years in doing this in different ways in smaller places. And I'm thinking here, folks, I just don't even know. I, I want, I, I'd, I'd like to see the proper thing done once. And I just can't see why we, we, we are so fallen in our, in our uh, conceptualizations that all we have is, uh, we told, gnashing of teeth. That's all, that's all we have, it's apparently. No, I don't believe that. And I think that's the, the better view, uh, because if you just all you're doing is gnashing teeth, then what are you doing? You're just the animal creature that they said you were. And so, we know the militias are going to now shut down the government. That's a whole new dynamic now. Instead of developing the, the knowledge of the guarantees that the federal government was supposed to do to stop this, uh, this tyranny within the state, destroying the Republican form, opening up the, the point to say that this is all violative and uh, treason against the people, and letting more people know about that, and things that you can do, and then getting to our lawsuit, being able to, to say these people right here in 2013 already have an injunction against the, the state. They don't are, that this governor's orders are void upon these subject matters enjoined in 2013. Why isn't that a better statement than saying, come and, ki come and get me? Now, then you get to enter into the discussion of, now why would they not answer? Why would the government not respond in 2013? 
then how can they uh, how can the, the the orders be not void and give yourself some some measure of the objective basis more than the rhetoric that we see bandied about in the in the media that's controlled by the invader i just i think i'm getting i don't know what to say folks i mean there's given the right there's a big opportunity here for you to all see what's going on, but there's a bigger opportunity to get involved and not let these militia types. I'm really disappointed in this. They think they, they read the Constitution. They think they know what's going on. And yet everything they do, it turns out to be a wrong step. And if they're doing that 100% of the time, folks, I told you, that's a, that's not, that, that's a plan. Whether that's a miswiring in people or not, it still ends up being the plan is guided by the miswiring. And you all don't ever will ever hear any conversations I have with any of these folks. And I'm telling them, or my colleagues are through roundabout ways are telling them, you know, you've got to look at it this, and you're doing it incorrectly here, and why don't you try over here? Well, trying to do it over there where it belongs to be done takes away all their uh, braggadocio about how big they are and bad they are with their Second Amendment and all their uh, camouflage and the big gang that they end up being, uh, they have no record to proceed on. It's one thing to have, in this case, to have set up that record and then go to make a citizen's arrest it would be at least doing it a little bit better. To not have any support from the senators in the proper way really diminishes that capacity. Now, for us, the Jefferson Mining District, we have our we have a default judgment. I don't have to get to. I don't. It's just something we're try, attempting to enforce. The failure to be able to enforce the injunction of which is self-evident a destruction of the Republican form of rep representative government, as evidence as the rep as the representative had to leave, or the senators were, had to avoid. The, the, the default judgment is self-evident proof the way this is. Self-evident that the Congress is not guaranteeing that to the people. This is what they should be really upset about. Where's the Congress guaranteeing this this Republican form government that represents the, the protection and guarantees to property and law and the protection against foreign invasion on policy, voluntary policies, no less. Where is your government? And so now I get to the truth. Where are the governments? Everyone says that, oh, we, I, don't, I believe in no government. You're living in that time. We have no governments right now. And I, and I told you that what happened at the federal level back in 2012, why I went to crickets. Does that mean that we don't have a government? Is You have to answer that in an interesting trick question. Do we have a government then? Yeah, the government's in you. And it's in your, if I can use the word, it's in your, you're bring, coming together on the properness of the, of the law in you that's reflected in the objective basis to come together to do that to counter what you now see in the news that's going on. That requires a populace that understands something. And to tell you the truth, I just can't see it in us, to my dismay. I don't know. I just think about. I just sitting here thinking about what. What are you all do? What are you all thinking about? Is it fun to look out and see your your, your country destroyed? I mean, I don't. I'm looking right now. I don't even know if I can get to the story far enough. Do I bring up the story right now? On this destruction of your government, and you're allowing it. And the whole point of this construction was that you were were needing to be vigilant to protect yourself against these people that would come in and steal all this away from you. Do I go to there now? I got so much to say. It's all sitting here. What? Like it's almost here. I've got it out of turn just by two. I'm trying to look at how to work this thing out here within the tabs. Let me go there now. We were going to go to Mars, but I'm not going to go there now. Maybe go down there after a bit. You have the Republican form of representative government. You have a guarantee. This word is very powerful, folks. A guarantee. This doesn't. This means that it, it, there's a, an anticipation. 
there's an anticipation to stop before it gets going an invasion that restrict that constrains and destroys the Republican form of representative government. This was an agreement that was done in organic documents. And I told you that, that or, the, the one that was supposed to guarantee that also agrees that everybody in the country is an, an, an enemy combatant. And now we have a serious problem that we should have been fighting a long time ago. What's well, great that someone's that the militia is going down into Oregon and going to do what they think they're going to do. I think they could come be coming with some substantial foundation to be able to be there. They can literally put that check and balance on the government in the proper way and not have it turn around on them as being uh, the terrorists that they're going to be turned into without that. And don't forget, I already have the bad taste in my mouth of these militia types and the good do-gooder types and the people that are good intentioned people. We'll call them Christian people. Good meaning Christian don't want to hurt a fly type people. And we're, and I'm talk, I'll reference the Bundys by name that will not listen to reason, will not listen to wise counsel, will not look at the evidence before them, and will proceed down whatever they feel their conviction tells them, which shows me there's no spirit being actually speaking to them. That we now have a militia stepping in to threaten that the government now is going to take a, obviously going to take a protective stance against, that never set the right record to say they could have done it, not be, the, the, the ego-driven militia group that gets to stand there in their, in their camouflage with their guns and all, or, or standing, uh, barking out what they think that you're going to do. They could have did it a lot more quietly. Set up the foundation, set up records, send in letters really quickly, and then did what, folks? Write in the law. Go find the one who you can make a probable cause arrest for, right? As a citizen's arrest. Oregon has that. You can use the same militia, but there's going to be one making that arrest. You don't advertise it. It's already written inside the record that no one sees. And then you form up to make a citizen's arrest under the law. Not, in the, not, not stand out and as a group that can be identified by the federal government as a terrorist and say we're going to stop, we're shutting down the Oregon, we're going to do things that cause the Oregon government to shut down. And I guess I've been, an, here, I'm, I'm saying it again, I've been an advocate for looking at it to go at it better and still accomplish what you're going to do in a way that you don't get pulled in as a terrorist or the Jeopardy or the enemy combatant. Why? Because even, because they declared you all the enemy combatant, so about anything you do is under the scrutiny, and that you are also under now the added pressure that they can hold you indefinitely. And they can do so without a check and balance. And I told you here, this is what they're wa the militia is walking into. And at some point, my mind says this is what, what can be maybe pressed against the senators and why it's so important to say the right thing and make the right record and, a, and a proceed correctly. It just came out this week uh, that what I told you, the consequence leading up in through the NDAA, where we were told about indefinite detention, even of United States citizens, and I told you through the murder memo of 2010, and I'm telling you this, I think in 2012, when it finally came all together and I could prove it to you, all the documents and evidence was there that you could read. Remember I told you that that murder memo in the, in the, uh, 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 the evidence attached to it by an attorney, no less, justifying this whole thing, declared that there was literally no judiciary that they were going to have to follow. It said that they will use executive expedience and presume everyone in the world an enemy combatant, subject to indefinite detention, without due process. And we went global because I point also pointed out for you, and I read it, for those of you that were listening, you heard it, that they were not going to honor the, even the Libra Code which was international law back in 1899. I told you, I've told you all about this, folks. The, it, it was um, in the Hague Convention. They were throwing out international considerations. International law, I told you also recently, is just a, what standards and, and norms. Okay, It's not law. It's how, how nations respond to each other. 
They, and it said the United States government, the executive of the United States government, was going to disregard that. And it got its authority through Congress to do that. And I'm also, and then I added to you, I told you when they brought up the Libra Code, they were telegraphing it, actually got the authority through Lincoln, who was also another lawyer, who denounced the whole thing as well, saying the executive has this power to maintain the union. Okay, so I've given you the lineage. I've told you we had a serious problem. I went to crickets in 2012. I'm still playing crickets beyond my wildest hopes. I'm still, you know, there's just not a, a, a mind. We're seeing the same failures in the Oregon thing going on as well. That the people that the people are moving to try and solve, to try and cause what they think is a good, they're, they're all good intentioned think that they're doing the right thing are actually walking into the trap that was set up a long time ago that was told to us in public notice in 2010 and then divulged again and more openly in 2012 where they told us they're going to executive branch expedience. They're disregarding the judiciary and it's not relevant and the Congress really has nothing to say for one of two reasons. One is that they've allowed it through the what the A A U M or something, and then the N D A. They continually agree to this destruction, and so they're out of it. And I told you right there that when the executive decided there was no need for judiciary, then why would you need a judiciary? There's no due process, and that they didn't have to regard the Congress because they either agree already, don't shut it down, or we have war powers that we can use that apparently supersede the whole Constitution, I said this country ceased to exist. The country's only going to be in you as you enforce it. And I would have to say correctly because you aren't the power militarily. We get that today now. In uh, came out of the intercept of, of all places. The, uh, in Guantanamo case, U.S. government says it can indefinitely detain anyone, even United States citizens. You think that's old news, folks, huh? Is that old news? No. This is a recent case that confirms what I told you in 2012. That was going on against you. Again, this starts off for us recently here in the Patriot, P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act. Everyone wants to call it the Patriot Act because that's a good euphemism that keeps your mind controlled. But you don't say it that way. It's P-A-T-I-R-O-T. It mean, those letters mean words. And that's where it started, where they started to get this, they started to, they pulled that trigger, folks, and no one, no one understood what was going on. The government says it can indefinitely detain anyone, and uh, even U.S. citizens. And this was through a court case. Remember, I told you the judiciary does not matter to the federal government uh, executive branch right now. And I told you because of that, and because of the authority, the judiciary is not going to stop this. For over 17 years, Moath al Alwi, and you can go ahead and, and prejudice your own mind to listen to this and think when I say Yemeni citizen, you go Arab in your mind or you go in terrorist or whatever you want. You keep prejudicing your thoughts right there if you do, and you will forever seal your fate. They've just extended what they're going to do to this guy as a foreigner who they might believe is in. Uh, he has no charges, no, no nonetheless. But they now extend all this prejudice on you. So keep prejudice in your mind, and you're going to bring, you'll be susceptible to all this. And it's not going to come, you're not going to be wearing your turban when they collect you up. So understand that as well. For 17 years, Moath al Alwi has been held in Guantanamo Bay without charge. Without charge. There's no due process, folks. They don't need a judiciary here, they don't even need the military court. A Yemeni citizen, Al Alway, is one of the Guantanamo forever prisoners. That's a quote. It's a statement. It's a status. Forever prisoners, folks, without due process. We already heard that in the first two sentences. Those whom the U.S. government has not charged with a crime but is unwilling to release. Now, I want you to just think about it. You think that's where, you think, you think that's where Julian Assange is moving into? You think this is what's going on? I look at this as a big, big good thing for people like Assange. Coming from outside trying to be brought into a system like this without due process that can be held forever. Because they just determine, they have the right to determine your status, the government, the executive branch, without oversight. Again, this is a Supreme Court case that was determined on June 10th. The Supreme Court declined to hear an appeal in his case. What did I tell you back in 2012? 
The, the executive branch said the judiciary, the judiciary is irrelevant. Today, the judiciary says they're correct. Justice Department, the justice judicial branch is irrelevant to the power they're wielding. If, and I don't know what goes through people's mind. You should just be shaking your head on this with a big fear in your heart. Not fear mongering. They just told you that the United States, the federal United States government is willing to pick you up. And I'm just going to let you remind you the CIA says your states are administrative divisions of that. Likely why Congress didn't step up to protect the people in Oregon for their, their Republican formed government. Likely why the de President Trump does not respond to our letters of enforcement, JF, Jefferson Mining District, letters of enforcement. And don't, don't think, I, I don't talk to my, about my name much. I'm a name party on that case, so I'm right with that, folks. I'm right there. I'm not talking opinion. This is my enforcement as well as a name party. The Assembly of Jefferson Mining District, of which I'm a part, is also a named party. We are sending enforcement letters that the federal government and the top official, the president, the only officer that is able under the Constitution, given that it still would exist, can resolve the constitutional crisis on the international level that this creates. When I tell you we're pretty well integrated on the problem of tyranny, treason, destruction of the country, how I can identify that they talk about national security, but they don't actually mean it, and that's how we challenge it. It's a challengeable. If they meant national security, they wouldn't be doing this to its own people. They would be answering a constitutional crisis that is in law that they had obligation and duty to fix. The president's the only one who can do this, and he refuses to even respond, to even acknowledge that he got a letter from us. Well, so interesting check and balance. We get to do that through the post office, don't we? That we all we have to do is show that he received it, and we set the record of the dereliction to do a duty. What I tell you early on, it's not about your job. We got to connect up a duty that someone's owing. Now, what's the well? Well, if there's no constitution, he has no duty. Well, then he is a criminal, isn't he? He's got no protection whatsoever. Go ahead and go there. I don't care how these guys go. Wherever they go, I'm going to run them down, given I have the opportunity to. Now, I'm only one guy. I can't go up against the whole whole of the Oregon uh, gar government. I can't go up against the, all the uh, state police. I can't go up against the military that would protect a derelict president. So I can I can only do so much, and right now that's to make a record of it and hope all you all start paying attention. And more importantly, those that do band together like a militia start thinking with their head instead of other places. On June 10th, the Supreme Court declined to hear an appeal in the case where the government asserts it has the right to forever hold prisoners, even United States citizens, folks. Is what I told you was going to happen in 2012 when I exposed the murder memo evidence. I told you when they went to executive expedience, the judicial branch was irrelevant. And the judicial branch, the Supreme Court that was supposed to be under a constitution to check the excesses and inherent power. You don't even need a case. To stop the excess, and it didn't. I told you they were going to not engage it. We got that proof right today. And if you, any of you folks think that there's a country going on here, USA, 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 you're missing the boat real wide here, big time. The ship of state sunk a long time ago. And that's why your militia is going to go down the tubes. Do you think a constitutional institution is going to be able to fight anything when it doesn't have a constitution that the occupier relies on? You really have to get your head really screwed on straighter. The Supreme Court, I don't know, I could read this all day. You won't get it, but I could just read this in detail of the tape. It's everything right here. The Supreme Court declined to hear an appeal on the case, which was a challenge to that forever prisoner status to be held without charge forever, which can be extended to now U.S. citizens, which is why I tell you, you better be careful what that U.S. citizen status is, and you better be able to identify that you're different than that as one potential uh, avoidance and one potential uh, stepping back place that you can have relative to what's coming down on us, or what has come down on us. And I'm reading, just as I look down off my tabs, I look down at the anti and RLM chat, you are no longer Paying, uh, I say playing by universal rules, 
uh, and I hope you meant playing because it says paying, but you will be playing by an arbitrary written set of rules which supersede nature. Okay, yes, playing. Thank you, Anti. Uh, that's true, but it's not, we're not helpless. That's what I've been trying to tell people. There is a universal set of rules that you will use, and that objective basis, documented objective basis, does become how you get judged by others. And it becomes the thing that you bring. Again, in a war, nothing is a shield. So don't think I'm saying that this is the answer. What I'm saying is you are now at the heightened position of being able to prove your righteousness, if, without getting the legal or the religious side. You have to prove you're absolutely dead on in the record before you move. Again, remember, this is war, what they're talking about. They removed the legal, legal, um, Libra Code. That's the law of war. They said, we're not putting by any rules. Exactly, anti. But what have I been saying despite that? I said, hey, there's still rules. What are you going to live by? There's still these principles in nature, your natural principles. Are you going to assert them, or are you going to sit there like crickets? Okay, I'll say it one more time, and I'll stop. I, I can't tell you how important it is that you understand what just happened here. On June 10th, with regard to an appeal against fighting, an assertion and actual physical constraint of a gentleman in Guantanamo Bay without charges, the Supreme Court declined to answer, to protect him against that condition, which was predicted justified, if you will, by a bar member in a, in a memo, the murder memo of 2010, to the federal government that said that we can indefinitely detain anybody, anybody, anywhere, no rules, no law, no judiciary. We don't even really care about the Congress. The Supreme Court just agreed, folks. Now, Breyer, Justice Breyer, comes back and says, we're going to have to grapple with this uh, prisoner, the scope of this government's power to hold them at some point. And that's what I was telling you. You're going to have to have that, you're going to have to have that word in your mouth. This is playing out in front of us right now. The, 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 I guess I'm a little bit concerned here. The militias, of, it'll, it'll be handled to keep, part of this gets handled in a way that it doesn't want to make, Make dragons out of cricket crickets. It wants to keep the crickets crickets. So that I'm not. It's not sometimes not able to predict that the there's going to be a, a full out attack or whatever condition. It's big boot stomping. They do keep track of the pre, of the pressure cooker, but the militia and the uh, senators, without speaking in the objective basis, are allowing a record to be made that they can be treated mistreated this way. Now I know I know all those guys are much smarter than this, so I don't. I'm a little confused as to why they'd proceed this way, and I don't think going down that path is really a plan. I think this is just folly on lots most people's uh, people. I guess feel uh, protection in numbers, and these militias are nothing compared to what could come against them if it's focused on them. But certainly, one man is not, and yet one man, one woman, can make a citizen's arrest, protected in that power to do so with the proper record in the time in order to make the issue more more proper before someone who could actually really cause a trouble. And all they have to do, everyone going to say, oh yeah, I've got, we've got the militia, we're doing the constitutional rights and all that. All they have to do is set up the record that shows that you're just another terrorist. And when you haven't made your, made your proper voice, not your opinion of what your proper rights are, but you made the record within the objective basis, you will have nothing to, to fall back on. What I tell you, you need to set up all the time. What I see, these leaders in these groups will walk out of a room, storm out of a room after I've explained to them a condition they have no clue over. That they put themselves at risk in ways they didn't need to. They put others at risk because they want to be the commander. And I've attempt, been attempting all these years to tell me, don't do that. Don't Step back a bit. Let's, let's think this out. Really, I mean really think this out. So Justice Breyer says, we're going to have to grapple with this at time, sometime. Well, are they really? The Supreme Court just declined to, de to reinterpret the government's assertion that you are, you, everybody in America, we the people, just gone. There is no such thing. You're an enemy combatant, period. It's whether or not they focus in on you or the group of you. 
is all. And they can call you what they want, indefinitely detain you. You have no judicial process to remove you underneath the setup that the government's doing. And I've been telling you how to go about attacking that as that false presumption, the assumption of, na of national security, uh, where it's actually a felony and a treason. And the dereliction of officers to guarantee, say, folks, it's supposed to happen before. And the dereliction also within the branches, the inherent power to check these things is on us as well. So the, the Supreme Court rejection of Breyer's comments briefly brought Alawi's case back to national attention. Back. See, it's been hidden. People aren't paying attention to it. Every day that I play crickets, I've been bringing attention to this problem. Uh, maybe I should just stop. I'll just read this next paragraph, and then I'll stop. You either get it, and you either see we have a serious, serious, serious problem that not even Trump is willing to step up and do anything about it. I'm not, forget this deep state nonsense. It's just another excuse. I've told you, one decision maker with the law is the majority. One the senator with the law doesn't have to re, uh, get into any banter about an issue over job. One, uh, someone, anyone that comes bring the law of any criminal it becomes the, the enforcement of the law and the way of our life that was protect to protect us. The lack of all that allows the crime. I don't know how many people have said this better than I have ever will ever say. And I don't like working on, I see lots of people want to quote quotes. Big deal. Quote, quote all your quotes. They've been telling you that you need to be acting, not quote their quote. Not buy into the quote that said if you don't do this, you're, you're in the problem. And so now you'll just quote the quote and think that you don't have anything else to do. That all of a sudden, now that you see that it's a problem and it's no good, that's good enough. What an accessory to the crime. Stop quoting. It's like the problem I have with memes. Stop quoting people and say that's the reality. That means either that you're missing it or you haven't done what you were supposed to do. I keep bringing up the one about Thomas Jefferson and said we were supposed to be a mass of educated people to be vigilant on our freedom. I just don't quote the quote. I tell you that's the standard. And then what am I doing? I'm out doing something else. I'm doing something to be that educated uh, part of the populace that's vigilantly working to maintain, uh, maintain a structure, maintain a life of, of liberty, if you will, uh, if, the way you mostly understand it, freedom, the mo way you mostly understand it, a, a life that's supposed to be a limited form government is what I go out and do after I tell you what Thomas Jefferson said. I don't sit in some chat room and throw out these little quips to try and sound like I'm some kind of an educated seer uh, and philosopher of all that's all that's supposed to happen and uh, that has happened in history. No, we use these as indicators that something's wrong and we need to uh, correct those and, and respond in them. Today we hear now, well, at least here today, it was done on June 10th, if you were tied into the Supreme Court peer, uh, uh, opinions, the Supreme Court rejection of Breyer's comments briefly brought Al Lawe's case back to national attention. National attention. But it's of Everybody in that nation, they should be paying attention to this. They're not, but they should be. Little noted, however, were the eyebrow-raising assertions that the government has made this case about its powers to indefinitely detain not just Al-Alway, we, Al-Alwi, but anyone, including U.S. citizens. The quote from the, from the filing that, allowed the Supreme Court to, re to reject an appeal. There is no bar to this nation's holding one of its own citizens as an enemy combatant. All right? Do I have to say, do I have to say more? The, on that assertion by the government, the unchallenged assertion by the government, you can be held as an enemy combatant. Did you hear in there that they had to qualify the truth of that? No. These are the things I'm telling you that, that you, the silence that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Now, in the future, we're not going to be necessarily called enemy combatants. Well, you're seeing it now in the states and the way the government just shoot people. You will be treated as one. You will be given only so much rights as to keep the other prairie dogs from getting excited about the fact that the eagle just took one of them and this is going to mistreat them. 
but at any time you could be just held. And this is where I think I've seen over time, we were used to do motions for speedy trial. At some point I realized we could put those in and they were being ignored. The law and the statute would say, so this is long before the Patriot Act. The laws would say something about what constitutes a speedy trial within the decisions and the statement to the fact that there was one. And you would do a motion when that time would exceed, it would be exceeded, and the court would come back and it said that it would either, de it would just deny it. Now I saw this long before what was going on with the Patriot Act, P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act, that the speedy trial provision was being removed. Like a lot of people were saying the habeas corpus was being removed, but I still have, I still believe it's still in some effect and may be how you counter this, uh, one of the ways you do it. Also addressing don't leave the presumption of national security or its needs uh, without con uh, without cha good challenge. But they removed the speedy trial provision administratively within the cases. I noticed that over time, long years. We would put a motion to to to, to, uh, to dismiss for lack of speedy trial, and they would these, these the judges wouldn't care, so-called judges. They wouldn't care. And I said, uh-oh, we got a change going on, and there's no way to address it. And when you, some people I think did try, but they were, uh, the lower decision to not regard the, the statement that there's a speedy trial provision was not agreed, was not upheld. And so we saw a judicial uh, breach right there. And so most of you all never saw that because you weren't engaged with that part. And I don't say you have to, because now I'm telling you it was going on. We see it looks like what's going, an extension. It was like the beginnings of how this thing was going down against us. But not my point more today, just to point out that there's ways to identify they're here and they're violating us and that there is no judiciary to stop it. That murder memo, it said exactly what our future is. The Supreme Court denied engaging in deciding that. They agreed with that murder memo. I don't know what more to say. Now we'll go into one more story here relative to that. Stephen Breyer is worried about the forever wars, permanent prisoners, and the statement here from Slate.com, which I understand might be progressive, which shows you how how a broad spectrum this thing is, is going across all political ideas you might have, all conservative or liberal conceptings, everything is underneath the umbrella of enemy combatant. Uh, and then this uh, Slate, uh, Joseph Stern says, uh, he's 15 years too late. What did I say, folks? <laughs> I said, I said the very same thing. When that woman stepped up in their inherent power to stop the uh, check the balances of the Patriot, P-A-T-R-I-T Act, we were there. So he's at least 15 years too late. And I just, again, this is predictable by what was going on. You know them by their deeds, folks. This is all in the Libra Code that's been thrown out as well. And so I don't know, I just had a thought. It's come, come across my mind. People don't care. It just came through my mind. You don't care. You really don't care. You, oh, you're interested, but you don't really care. Nothing you think you can do about it. Nothing you can put in your mind to prepare for. There's nothing you can do locally to start pushing back against all this. And that's what's going to happen. Nothing's going to be pushing back. And those that do push back, in my, in my analysis, if I can look at the analysis of what I see ought to be done, and I say that only relative to uh, objective basis, black and white being applied, when nothing, no black and white's being applied but opinion, and there's no written record of that, those steps, you're, you, I've not seen those outcomes, uh, or those, those things turn out well, which I've been asking you to start becoming more, what, the investigative reporter, and the, and the, and though we hated to do it in high school, that report maker, you know, you, you make the, you're supposed to make a report turn in. Was, that's what we're essentially up to right now. Why? Because we truly are a weak people. And we just had the Supreme Court, despite Justice Breyer's contentions here, his concerns. He's way late, as I told you, and now and he confirms with the defeat of the of the denial of a, of an of an appeal on the assertion by the government they can pick you up and detain detain you indefinitely. And remember, all you folks that haven't got this citizenship thing worked out, or how to again prepare the point and the record that you're not one or both. The United States and the states have the ability to, to beat down on you at the same time. That, that should have been a big clue anyway. But now they can do it indefinitely, without charges. And remember, there people like what's happening in Oregon. If you, I don't know if you get this. 
What's happening in Oregon, not with the, represent the, the Republicans that are avoiding that condition, it's with the Democrats that are in power. They're redefining your life without law. And I just told you the punitive criminal you're determined underneath that new law without due process is an enemy combatant to what? Gaia. You're making war on her, that religion. If you don't think we're so close to having all your all subject at any time. Now, I, you, some of you may think that's a stretch. But when you have no judiciary, just like we heard in this case, and you have no remedy against it, and you're presumed without charge to be the criminal that they can punitively harm, don't we have the same condition as all we? in the state of Oregon. Did I go too fast for you all folks? And that's all what? That's all voluntary policy. That's reflexive. It's how the new behavior is going to be conformed. It's all under terrorism, underneath the unchallenged premise that you're a terrorist. That what they are presenting is the truth. And that we presume what they're saying is the truth. And you don't even have a way at least for the most part, most of y'all don't have a way to begin to challenge that. should terrify you. And Oregon is, they say another state did this. I don't remember, I don't haven't looked that deep. Another state has brought in this carbon tax stuff. Oregon's going to be the second, like that justifies it. You're watching the cancer come in to make you all, in, and you're all, your daily goings on, a terrorist, an enemy combatant to the policies of, the policies of this, of a foreign tyrant in your state. And I hope you just heard me define the carbon tax, the green jobs bill, the climate change impositions, the carbon market, just like they're treating Al Alwi. And there's no Supreme Court that's going to step up to protect you. If you don't think that we've just now gone to this terrorism thing right to your states, but on a different subject matter, determined by those in a supermajority, the only protection of which is some Republican senators that have just left the jurisdiction and have to weather the, the vilification of doing their duty underneath a, an assertion that their job was being violated. When everyone else thinks that that's okay, oh yeah, we're doing the job, got to have a job to do. No, they have a duty. You better start insisting on that a whole lot more because today is the day, folks. I don't know what else to say. The, there is no judicial branch to protect you from any punitive harm that someone at the, in authority may want to level against you. And I'm suggesting to you, if it's not proven in the self-evident nature of it, that these uh, this Oregon legislation, HB 2020, is another way to give a subject matter cause of national security interests that you can be held without charge. Whether they let you walk around in your life or not is a whole other thing. Remember, where do I get the standard about how we know this is punitive? Remember the Tim's case. This is how this, this case is coming out to be so important. Remember the Tim's case. It tells us even if we are criminals, they can only do so much. HB 2020, the thing that the Republican senators are removing themselves from the state from, the thing that the militia is trying to respond to as, as ham-handed as, as it is, they're, they're, they're sitting there in the same capacity as the as trying to stop a terrorist without being able to out it because they haven't set the record for it. Um, uh, I don't know, folks. I'm, I'm almost speechless here. I've just connected up you being a terrorist because someone of a that's insane has just, just called you that, and the condition is now such that they can now deal with you without any measure of protection. Any of you who believe you can speak through a constitution as an authority against that without a record, you're just as insane but you're going to make the wrong example for everybody, and that's going to stop most of all the other prairie dogs from doing it correctly. As, as I talked to one of the guys who's supposed to be the leader of a militia group, 
I think one of the local, local contingent of Oath Keepers, I said, you didn't even have to call your guys out. What you needed to do is just go and show in a simple letter that the agency didn't have the right to do what he did. they did against that miner. And I showed him exactly how that would have worked. And this is sort of how this would work on a different level, though, with the state. You didn't have to put your guys in jeopardy that way. Not for that. Now, does it have force and effect? Well, yeah, because they want to keep the, the government wants to keep that pressure cooker down. They, want to, they don't want to blow up. But you go out and do the wrong thing. See, if it hadn't have been for the, in that case, if the, if the BLM couldn't have, ju ju they couldn't justify their condition. There was just nothing they could justify what they, their attack was over. That's why it worked there. And the government right now can justify it because they use their lawyers, no different than they did in 2010, to justify an action. You folks coming up against that are really in for some surprise. And I hope you, someone out there is listening to the wisdom of what I'm telling you. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't do it that way. But I'm saying there is a different way to go after it. I wouldn't do it as a group. Although there would be a bit of a group, but I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it as obvious. Again, uh, I, I better stop. I better not. I better not. Yeah, I better not. I want to offer some help, but it's uh, it always gets it always gets messed up. That someone already always does it wrong, and I don't get that either. But anyway, I better stop. Okay, so I've just tied to you the state thing that's going over in Oregon with the same state and condition that the justice. The Supreme Court would not pick up an indefinite detention, punitive harms, life-altering uh, uh, caging of people without charge, without due process, under a label that's untested, is, is connected up to you today now as certain what I told you back in the murder memo in 2012, I told you when I, when I went to crickets, uh, we're still there, and now Oregon's going to invoke a n different style way you can be considered a terrorist, uh, an enemy combatant. But but for what records we're making as the Jefferson Mining District, I don't know what else is going to be out there to to, to uh, make it. And no one certainly the criminal's not going to stop. Uh, as I've said before, you got a you got a bank robber. In another analogy, you got a bank robber coming out of a bank with a bag of money and a gun, and you're standing there with your uh, banking book or credit card or whatever it is. What are you going to do to stop that criminal? What are you going to do? You're going to tell him, your word's going to tell him, you're going to develop, what are you going to do? You're, you're, you're not, you don't have the power, the arm, the arms to do anything to a criminal. It is bigger than you. you put, let me put a different little context. The, the, the bank robber and his gang are coming out of the front door, and you're by yourself. What are you going to do? Is what's going on in Oregon right now. Is going on what the United States government not being opposed by the Supreme Court to check that and bring that how. How this is not destructive of the whole system. That, that question has never been, has not been brought up. And I guess it won't be. I'll stop. I'll stop. It's, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm, my mind is like kind of going blank here. What do I talk about that's more important than the destruction of what you thought? You want to have no state, folks? You got it. You got it. You got it in spades. Now what? In one state, the cancer is now moving to another state to make you that enemy combatant on a different subject matter. And the same thing is going on. And if you don't have a record of stopping that, how are you going to go to any kind of a, uh, how are you going to go to the public even, the, the final say, actually? The actual final say is the people. If you've got no record of the in, the criminality laid out, I, I don't know how we're going to do that. And uh, without a mentality to receive it, I don't know how we're going to do that. And you can't force that reception. You just got to hope reason comes. And like I said, this is a slate is writing about this. Is, I got to tell you, if you're conservative minded or or or, or liberal or progressive or even what liber, libertine libertarian. I don't know where y'all are. Uh, it covers everyone. Everybody sees this, and there's this being crickets to how this worked out on them. So how do I go from that to something more important? I, I don't even know. Let's let's jump off the world here for a moment. Something that fascinated me. I'll just jump off. We were going to go travel to Mars. 
Oh, yeah, there was another story about, I guess, cows on Mars or something, folks. They found methane. Uh, I wrote a tweet. I can't even get it up here. Methane, they found methane on Mars. They think it's going to mean life. And I find it fascinating. You know, the the, uh, the, rover, the rover must have broke wind, and uh, NASA blamed it on Mars or something. Because remember, man makes greenhouse gases. The red planet has greenhouse gases. And I always find it fascinating here on Mars, it means life. There's life on Mars, and that same methane means death on Earth. This is very stuff we're talking about here, folks, with the climate stuff. How the government agencies can't speak in one without forked tongue. I guess I can put it that way. Uh, but Mo Mars rover now, he jumped to Mars because that's where we're all going, right? We've got it all settled here. I guess we're going to go uh, peacefully inhabit another planet. I don't know why they just don't drag that planet closer to the sun and make it habitable. What's what's the problem? Why, why can't we do that? Get Elon Musk on that idea. I'll take 5%, folks. Mars rover has detected methane that could mean life on the red planet. Red planet has greenhouse gases. On life on Mars and a greenhouse gas means death on Earth is just an inconsistency in thought that I can, can't even get past. Do, do we, I mean, cows, they're trying to put bags on cows, folks. In, on Earth, because it's death on Earth. So I guess if we found methane, I guess we're going to find a cow up there, aren't we, on Mars? How is it in this in these in this day, you can look at l methane means life on one planet and death on the next? That you go over to say methane is a fossil fuel, <laughs> yeah, bones, dim bones, folks. You squeeze them and you get oil out of dim bones. Fossil fuel that causes methane that came for causes in the de decomposition methane. Don't look at it as a natural system that's actually creating it. It doesn't come from dim bones at all. That you blame that very same thing on Earth as death, and yet you'll marvel at it as life on Mars is an example of this insanity. And everybody has a has the obligation to stand up against it. And I have to say, regardless of our judgment against Republican Party. They're fulfilling our injunction to avoid the quorum that would bring the punitive harm like any making everybody in that state an enemy combatant subject to terrorist rule, uh, terroristic type impositions indefinitely. Folks. I mean, I, I think about that. I don't. Do people put this stuff together? I can't be the only one. I, boy, I hope I'm not the only one. I really do, and I hope a few of us. I hope there's a few of us that do, because we need to get the word out, folks. Okay, get back to Earth. Another thing I've been talking to you about, and how they they come and they control us, and how they're going to control us through this. This is a behavioral control thing. This ca uh, carbon. They now admit it's a climate a bill in Oregon. HB 2020 is a carbon tax thing. Uh, remember, they think of you as a bunch of carbon. They don't, remember, they shifted it from carbon dioxide, remember? Another greenhouse gas, they say. Nothing is so much more, more, more responsive in your environment, but now we're down to carbon and every molecule of it. If you haven't understood the slow and incremental change to get you to buy into this insanity, that they're now making it punitive. Uh, your, any carbon you have is a punitive harm, which you're going to be beat down and considered to be a terrorist uh, yourself, even though the people that are doing it are committing treason and, a, and foreign invaders, and you're not recognizing that. I mean, if the militia has a thing to do in Oregon, where would have you been all this time? All this time. I mean, before Malheur, before Bundy. Oh, where have you been? For all you smart people and knowing about the militia in the second. Where have you been? And then you go today and do the wrong thing. Like I've seen so, you do so many times. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you're doing it wrong. I'm not saying you don't have a cause. But your cause is misplaced. And getting back to this, I told you that this is all coming down on behavioral control and controlling, bringing you into austerity. And where Mars, on Mars, there must be cows because we found methane. And methane there is, is promoted as life on Mars. You turn around come to the Earth, and all of a sudden it's the same organization, NASA, N-A-S-A, actually, not NASA, N-A-S-A. And the, the ICUN and the Commerce Department and the Forest Service and the BLM all engage with the ICUN International Horde of Tr Trespassers that I haven't talked to for a long time. We'll tell you that this very same thing that produces life on Mars, 
must indicate life on Mars means death on the Earth are the same lunatics that are bringing on, remember the EPA, is the Environmental Protection Agency, is the pillar for the implementation of carbon through climate, so-called climate change, which is now a climate emergency, and I think that's a good thing, but I won't get off that. I'm saying a climate emergency is going to be a defeat. Because everyone's going to look out and see a beautiful day. And that's how that's going to work. But anyway, get back to the climate change. They're going to use that and bring austerity on through this position. And then they're going to need some controls. And I told you, be careful of this cryptocurrency. Because they're going to set it up. And maybe look cool right now, but they've got other plans on it. And they'll get people to buy in where they need to. And they'll promote it. And remember, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars is there to read. If you want to see an esoteric way to say you're going to plug in to the system they provide. They're going to appeal to your to your um, needs uh, a bit, or you thought about your needs, make it easy for you, and you'll plug in because it's nice and easy in order to bring on to you, your, through your, this voluntary consent, the things that the future we want, they want, is imposed upon you. And we can see the plan, the guidebook is the uh, Agenda 21, uh, or you can see now for the net till 2030, they got Agenda 2030, they're telling exactly how they're going to do it. And I've told you that they've got this plan set up for for when you look right down at the nubbins of it, one of the broadcasts is called the nubbins of it. Well, this is not going to be called that, but it's the same thing. It's all looking at the nubbins. It talks about financial debt servitude. And the way they're going to put that on is they're going to adjust what you think is... See, they got you off, off on the fiat, so you didn't know about money anyway. And I told you, all you all have to go back to some, some substance. Get back to silver and gold. However that's going to work, I don't know, but you've got to get back there. You've got to get to the tangible in hand stuff that you have to meet people over. And they got you on your digital devices, and they got you into fiat, and you keep agreeing to it, and they're going to move you, and I told you they're going to translate you into the digital realm, which doesn't even need the fiat. And then they're going to do something to keep your behavior controls, and they're going to start working on what you need in the world. And that's where you see the modernization of food security, housing security, air security, all this nonsense stuff. It's all like they want to make it like they're doing. And I said they're going to bring you into a medium of exchange that keeps track of all that. And I said when blockchain came up, I said that's the ledger they're going to use. Now well, here it comes a little better and better, better in focus for you all. An interesting name as well. We could, I guess we'll go through all kinds of stuff, but I just don't have the time. Libra. Libra. Let's talk about the horoscope, but we can go there. That's one of the discussions. And the symbology and all this kind of neat stuff. Well, they make it nice and warm and fuzzy for everybody as well. And the scales of balance of justice. And you don't understand who's holding the balance and who they got the one eye that they can see and who's going to do all that. Yeah, the balance, the justice that's been thrown down, the Supreme Court just destroyed. Yeah, that's the thing that's coming on now in the news. Libra, face, palm, Facebook's crypto Trojan rabbit. Cryptocurrencies are winning. If you need a proof, look no further than Facebook's proposed Libra stablecoin. With the release of its white paper, Tom Luongo explains the salient point is Libra is another attempt by current banking by the current banking establishment to slow the flow into world of hard money. In this respect, Libra is no different than Ripple or dollar settled Bitcoin futures contracts. These are products designed to slow the exodus of how the shadow banking system Ripple is a oh, excuse me, shadow banking system. Now, I'm not necessarily agreeing with all these opinions. I'm saying there's people talking about this, but it's on point of what I've been telling you about how they're going to transition. They use these to transition you through to another way to control you. And we're going to, people will, are buying into this hook, line, and sinker. Uh, oh, well. Ripple is a ripple on water. Okay, is a way, ripple, Libra, the ripples on the signal, the ripple of the symbol of the three waves uh, here as well. They, they're kind of, and you think it's freedom and all this, and then it's balance, and it's you don't realize who's holding the holding the scales and what the balance is going to be and who's going to determine it. And uh, and, uh, the, and anyway, it's, uh, moving on. On uh, the ripple is a way to to lower foreign exchange fees. Like that's a real important thing for all of us right now. Of off chain future settlement is a way to control Bitcoin prices and exasperate volatility to slow the crypto adoption by so called normies. That's not even all what I want to talk about here. That's someone who believes that this is a, like they apparently want to protect on Bitcoin. This whole ledger thing is a ledger of the debt that you're going to owe to society and how they're going to keep track. They're going through Facebook. And here's how they tell you that they're transitioning from what would you would think is even fiat into this new cashless society. 
is uh, kind of stated right here in one paragraph. It, it won't, however, be a crypt. It's a definition. It won't, however, be a cryptocurrency in the traditional sense. It won't have a limited supply, defined inflation rate, or any commodity character whatsoever. Now, with someone who's settled in Bitcoin and wants that as the future and all that, this is like a big joke. What I'm pointing out here, this is actually telling you this new currency cashless system is moving from actual money into, it doesn't even have a commodity character. What have we talked about before? It's your social credit. And your austerity will be coming through this punitive harm that this HB 2020 in Oregon, of which these Republican representatives are avoiding and leaving the state to avoid the quorum that would bring it in to the people of Oregon. It's a, it is the implementation of that system going through Facebook as an adoption, global adoption. And it's still in the test, so don't, it still has to work some stuff. I told you, they still got to work some stuff out. They're letting you work that out for them. Now, there's, this article is really kind of inferior to me. It's from Zero Hedge talking to someone else talking who uh, wants to bring up kind of philosophy things. I'm not into all that. I'm telling you this is how the tool of incrementalism is working against you all. They bring it, normalize it. It may not be you. They're going to normalize it to others and numbers of others. But underwriting this thing I've been talking about today, was the enemy combatant status that they'll put on you for whatever subject matter the supermajority in power puts on you. That will be tied through things like this that will be documented and put on a ledger, literally a ledger of your life, from which your modernization of your security and needs will be met so, well, to someone else's standard and balance. And let me give you an indication of that balance. The balance right now has been overthrown by the judiciary as well and by the eco-terrorists themselves that think that this is all a good idea to bring on and all embracing this thing. What about your job to save the children and future generations? Uh, this, this has all been is being brought on by these people that are completely oblivious to the real, is, the real issue. That they will allow a destruction of the way of your life and impose this, and, and none of you will, will actually recognize it. You won't say much against it. You'll just complain that it's going bad, and then when they get it through, that you'll just be paying your taxes. But in the future, this may not even happen for me or anybody that's around in the next 20, 20 years, but right in some close future, they're going to be imposing all this on the way you live, and these mod food security, the modernization, your housing security, all these modernization acts will be mo being modified this whole time and plugged into this face plant coin for you all to do the face plant. Fall flat on your face with it. Put a shiny, good, cool name on it, Libra. It's balancing. The balance has been adulterated, and we can see the proof of that. When I talk to you about how in neat the National Environmental Policy Act, there's a balance built in, but it balances in favor of man's environment, not natural environment. And that's not to say that man's environment destroys nature's environment, because actually when it works, you leave a farmer to farm and a rancher to ranch, they actually benefit the natural environment. But nothing in the way this is supposed to apply, certainly done by, by the federal government at least, is supposed to interfere with man's environment. We're not supposed to be the scourge that we've had. The balance is in favor of the needs of man. Has been adulterated. And in NEPA we see that adulteration by those that are like the people in Oregon. Who've gained a supermajority. They gained consensus of the population as well. And a few people are rising up to do what they can. But they're not understanding the dynamic. And they're going to be doing it incorrectly. And that will usher in that whole thing. But the balance that they talk about in this coin that's going to be attached to your life through this social, this thing that's not even a commodity character, is really planning to adjust your behavior, is how, is what is being put into place. Stealthily, silently transparent to most of you all. That fit right into what's going on in Oregon, fits right into the government being able to tell you that you are the enemy combatant to whatever subject matter they want, and this is how we have kept the ledger and proved that. 
So you're actually confessing. You're talking about the Fifth Amendment's gone as well because you're f confessing against you by someone who holds the balance who will make the standard and norm, the international law. And people are oblivious to this whole thing. I don't even know. If I'm even hopefully I, I'm putting something together that somebody hears this. But here it is, right here, the start of it. It's called a lib the Libra, the face plant, Facebook. They're, well, they're Zuckerbucks. They're called. Big oh, Keep the keep the euphemism coming, folks. I'm telling you, this is the tools that are becoming. Maybe not these exactly tools, but the methods of how they're bringing in this very thing that I've been talking talking to you about. That I'm only talking to you about it because it's affecting our ways of life in America uh, in ways that are treasonous. And I don't say that word lightly. Again, they're making war on the laws of the United States, including the states themselves, in their organic sense, as applied and insisted upon by those that will, in the proper way. They're making a treason against us. They are destroying the protections. And when they got rid of the judiciary, you lost your ability to protect your property. Look around us, folks. The judiciary is bought in. It's a, it's a foreign trespasser. It's an NGO. Look at this, folks. The Bar Association. One of our parties. They will bring in the sustainable de development, climate change, where appropriate. Where I told you it means where they get away with it. Helped by y'all who do it wrong or don't do anything. But this is a coin that has no commodity character at all. In a social sphere, in cashless condition, goes through the Bitcoin technology ledger. It's just a dang ledger. But it's a database. That's all this thing is that you will be forced into because of your criminality, your, your presumed criminality, when an, uh, HB 2020 gets put in. That's the start. That's how they start to do it. That they then insist that you have certain con connections or you are penalized punitively more until you comply, comply or die is how they're going to do it to you in the near future. They're setting it up right now. You're right to reject it. You have to reject this. I'm My, my objection is how you've been doing it, because you haven't been doing it uh, correctly, and I think there's enough people in, as evidence of the wrong way to do it. That when you do it more properly, things aren't at jeopardy, and you move along. And I, again, me and my colleagues, I, we see that. I see a little bit to be able to tell me that I'm not, I'm not nuts. But if we don't remove, we don't respond to this. We're watching the proof in the news that Facebook is a face, a so-called stable coin. They want to make, give you some confidence, confidence in it, get your consent. They're setting up the non-commodity. Remember I told you they went from production, confused it with commercial, commercial commodity. Now they're moving from that into this other thing. I told you it's not what we see today is being adjusted. They're transforming our future, folks. They're telling us they're doing that. And so, I, again, you can agree with me and do nothing. You could argue with me and do nothing more. You can do whatever you want that's not correct. Whatever. Even if I'm wrong, you better find the right way. I haven't seen anybody be able to help. I'd be working in that writer way if I could know about it. But I've just tied together to you. Something's happening in a state far, far away from some of you. Uh, some not so much and trying to do something there. And if you're not doing it quite right, it's going to be a bigger problem. That, that the, gov the United States government said that everybody's a United States is an enemy combatant, and it'll be a, an enemy combatant to those that do not accept this new transformed system. And the Supreme Court will not be there to protect you if there was justice that you expected, and you should expect it. Why? Because that's what gives is supposed to be giving you your protection in a Republican form of government, representative government. And if you don't have it, you've got to stop saying you're in that government and someone's overthrown it. And until you come to that reality and that truth and understand that by doing that, you have an invader in your gates and done, done you dirt. And you take responsibility in that. You're not going to understand anywhere close to what I'm saying or how to, how to go in and, and get into engage it so that you don't get hurt. I hope uh, something I said today encourages, mo motivates you, and gets you into doing something more properly with the proper thoughts as well. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, keeping the website flowing and uh, all the head cook and bottle washer there appreciated. Jules over at UCY, thank you for this indication. And uh, Sound Minds, thank you for this indication and the extra stuff. Uh, it does a whole lot more stuff beyond uh, my broadcast as well over there if you're on it in the chat rooms. Thank you. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.